Hello and welcome to Islander Sewing Systems and how to make a Hong Kong finish. As you can see here, this jacket has been turned inside out and it's almost pretty enough to wear as is. What I want you to notice is that we have covered all of the raw edges of the inside of this jacket with a Hong Kong finish. Now, we, I used silk charmeuse. As you can see here, I've got a piece of hand dyed silk charmeuse and I've stripped, cut strips at one and a quarter inches wide. You don't have to use silk. You can use rayon or you could use a very fine cotton like lawn or shirting. You don't want to add any bulk to the seams. That's why it should be a really fine fabric. So let me show you how it's done. Hi, I'm Janet Prey with Islander Sewing Systems. And today I want to show you how to do a Hong Kong finish on the raw edges of the inside of your garment. You know, you can oftentimes just serge those edges. There's lots of different finishing techniques, but I know a lot of seamstresses just love using this finish because it makes the inside of your garment look as pretty as the outside. So what you're going to need is bias strips of fabric and that fabric needs to be a very fine fabric. I like to use silk or rayon and I know a lot of seamstresses will use the silk that they find in silk ties because it's already biased and you can strip that up but one tie doesn't give you a lot of yardage so you want to be cognizant of how much yardage you need and for the Fast and Fabulous jacket you need quite a bit. So um, I took about a yard and a half and I cut it into bias strips. And those bias strips I cut at an inch and a quarter. That's a minimum width. You can go a little wider. And especially if you have a little trouble staying consistent with your quarter inch seam allowance, give yourself a break and cut that at one and a half. But what you're gonna do is cut several strips of a fine fabric like a silk into one and quarter to one and a half inch strips. Now we'll get started and I'll show you how it's done. Now here I want to show you that I always test first. Yes, I am a sewing expert and a sewing teacher and I sew all the time and yet I always do a sample first. You want to make sure that you've just got everything calculated properly before you go on to your finished garment. It'll save you a lot of ripping and a lot of headaches. For example, if I make a mistake on a sample, I don't have to rip it out. I just throw it in the trash and start over. So this has been applied, and this would be the uh, right side of the seam. And then on this side, you can see what it turns out. And don't worry about this raw edge, because we cut this on the bias. This is not going to fray. So it's perfectly acceptable that this is a raw edge, and it will not be seen. All right, so let's get started. I'm happy with my example. So now let me show you on a facing. Now obviously this is an abbreviated piece of facing just for the um, purpose of showing you how it's done. But you can see that a lot of seams and facings are going to have curves in them. So it's imperative that you cut your strips on the bias that you're going to sew on here so they'll contour to that curve. If you were to cut this on the straight, you would just have a very wonky, ripply mess here and it wouldn't lay nice and flat inside your garment. So don't do it with anything but bias. Now, I've cut this strip at one and a quarter and I'm going to stitch it at one fourth inch, a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're just going to lay them right sides together. I'll get them lined up right at the beginning, sink my needle, maybe do a couple of stitches. And then I want to get back here and prepare this for the curve. Now notice I'm using my left and my right hand. All you Islander sewing systems uh, aficionados, you know, thumb under, fingers on top, which will keep the bottom layer from going through faster than the top. And why is that important? Because we don't want any puckers. We don't want to ease the bottom to the top. So always remember that. Now these fingers are going to hold this right close to that edge because it's very important that the ed raw edges be flush with each other. So I'll just work my way down here. 
And no, I don't use any pins because those of you who know me and know my system, pins are not necessary if you know how to hold the fabric properly. It is important that you maintain a consistent quarter inch here. And I know in the beginning of the lesson I told you if that is a real difficult, maybe you're newer to sewing and you really don't feel confident with that, then cut this at one and a half, your strip, and it'll give you a little forgiveness as far as that goes. And sometimes for your first attempt at something, you just need that little extra forgiveness and you improve as you go along. So here we are. So I've stitched it all at a quarter, keeping my raw edges very close to each other. Now I'm going to take it over to the pressing station and just give you my little tips on how to press this properly. Okay, now we're at the pressing station. And what we want to do is press this as tight as we can against that stitching. It'll make for a very nice clean wrap around the raw edge. Now remember, anytime you're applying this to the outside of a facing, this is the neck facing, you'll want to have trimmed off the quarter of an inch that would have been turned under because you're going to just be covering that edge and you won't be turning it under. So you see we have a nice flat press all around here. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to wrap that silk around that seam allowance just like this making sure to get it right up against the edge of that seam allowance and you can feel it particularly in a coat fabric because it's heavy enough you can just feel it with your fingers and I give it a lot of nice steam and then I come in well whoops let's get this fixed okay so we give it a lot of nice steam and then I like to use the clapper and really push down because you can see now it doesn't want to come back up and that'll help hold it in place while we stitch in the ditch to finish our process. So again just push it right up against that edge. Don't fold that edge over but make sure you get nice and close to it and then give it the clapper after a little bit of steam. And you can see what that's going to look like now. Isn't that pretty? All right, so we only have one step left. All right, now we're back at the sewing machine. We've really given it a nice press. If you've got a clapper, by all means use it. If you don't, make sure you press down heavily with the iron, giving it some steam, and then let it cool where it lays. And that will also help you get that nice, strong edge. So now we're going to do a technique that I'm sure many of you are familiar with and it's called stitch in the ditch. So stitch in the ditch means we're going to stitch as close to this as possible, as close to this uh, binding as possible, and that's called the ditch right there. So if you can just find a place to line up your presser foot so that you're stitching right in that ditch and many of you have all different types of sewing machines and different feet so you'll find the one that from your machine that works best for you but what you're going to do is just keep on stitching all the way around and be sure to do all of your seams at one time and then do all of your pressing at one time it just makes the job go a lot faster Remember that if you've been in my class, I've taught you this. You do not straighten out a curve. We're coming into a curve. We're not going to do this. We're going to curve as we stitch. That will also make sure that your garment lays flat and neat. So here we have it. And all we'll need to do is do another little quick press. But you see how nice that lays. And that's the Hong Kong finish.